Uh, I'm Ifat, I'm uh, 53 years old. I have uh, three daughters. Uh, the oldest one, she's uh, 29. She's uh, a student medic, uh, studied to study uh, to be a doctor in uh, Romania just now. Uh, my second daughter, she's 26. She just moved uh, two weeks before the event uh, to Tel Aviv. And uh, my young, youngest daughter, she's uh, 22. Her name is Dor. She's living with me. And she was uh, with me the whole time. Uh, we live in Kibbutz Reim, like a few kilometers from the Gaza Strip. Uh, in the place that I thought until now and are still thinking, and I hope it will continue to be later, the most beautiful place one of the most beautiful places in, uh, in Israel for me. Um, I'm, a, I'm the head manager of the food industry in uh, Kibbutz Reim in the last uh, two years. That's about me. Now I go to the 7th of October, six o'clock in the morning. I woke up uh, usually almost every day I'm around the kibbutz uh, doing my work. Something uh, kept me in the house, lucky for me. And uh, very noise sounds start to happen. Start, start to happen. My daughter woke up, she came to me and she said, mom, mom, it's Eva Adom, which means it's the alarm is uh, on. I said, no, it sounds like uh, thunders. She said, no, no thunders, there's no rain. Mom, please. So we go into the safety room and only with our our mobile phones and they close the door and of course I open the TV and the, the, the usual thing we used to do it's when they, we have sounds like that is to go into the shelter room, wait to the boom to happen and then go out. And I thought it will be like this. So we got, only got the phones and that's all. Uh, it took us only a few minutes to realize that it's not going to be the case this time. We opened the TV and then I saw the track in the, the road with a group of terrorists uh, running around in the street with weapons. And uh, I said, oh, we're not going to go out. We're going to stay here. So we just stayed uh, inside the shelter room watching TV. Uh, in my kibbutz, there is a WhatsApp group of the kibbutz, which I was not on it. Uh, so I actually didn't know what was going on around. I just know that something not normal happening around us. Uh, after a while, which I cannot uh, know times, I uh, start heard here shooting around, uh, noises of iron rolling on the floor. And then, uh, we didn't know what really what happened. Uh, a neighbor of me, uh, one of my neighbors, he, he sent me a photo of the, the door handle and show me how it's supposed to be. And uh, I just realized that it was not like this and I couldn't close the door. So I just, uh, I pushed a closet right on the door thinking if someone will come into my house Maybe we'll give up, a, open the door if you will see the closet in there. I felt a little bit say, safe and slowly, but uh, surely the battery in my phone and in my daughter's phone start to end. So uh, I told the door, please uh, send messages to your sisters and my parents and your father uh, that we about to lose the contact, but we are okay inside the shelter room. And that's what happened. And then the phones went down and the, the noises were uh, sounds louder. And uh, it sounds like my house been shut, <laughs> but nobody came in yet. So we tried to keep quiet in the shelter room. And, and then the, the time went up, 
we didn't have drink, we didn't have food, we didn't know what's going on. I didn't, they didn't say nothing about the uh, rain. They said, they said that the uh, terrorists were in Kibbutz Be'eri, they talk, were talking about Faraza, they're talking about Nachalos, Nir Oz, all the people in my community. And uh, they started to talk about dead people and uh, other or, or uh, situations with the women. So uh, I knew there was a party because there was a party just across our, our uh, road, uh, the Nova party. And then uh, everything was silent suddenly. And the time just passed, 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 and there were evening. So in the evening, I suddenly saw on the news that the uh, rain was clear, which I didn't know even that there were things inside my house because I just heard uh, shotguns and uh, some iron stuff. And then my na my neighbor, the, the one who, who sent me the, the message about the handle of the door, he, knocked at my window and he said, if that rain was clear, you can go out, everybody looking for you. And I said, okay, but everybody know that uh, we are uh, unconnected because of the batteries. And uh, he said, okay, go and get the, the battery. I just opened the door, we ran outside, we got the batteries, both of us, me and my daughter, and we came in the room. And then I realized that I'm stepping in water because uh, probably one of the shots, the uh, gun uh, was uh, hitting my uh, boiler on the roof. So all the water went inside my house. Um, but it didn't, it, I didn't care about it. I just uh, wanted to get the battery and go back inside the room. So we just uh, put the phone again, we filled the batteries, but uh, it was, it doesn't matter because the, uh, the internet fell, so we didn't have connect anyway with no one. And we just stayed there praying that nothing will happen. In the morning, after 29 or 30 hours, I, I had another knock, knock on the window. There was another neighbor. I was scared to open because uh, I thought maybe maybe they can be uh, some terrorist with uh, someone that they took and ask him to knock on my door, on my window, I'm sorry. And uh, so I heard the noise of my neighbor. I recognized him, he was outside with his daughter. He said, if I can go out, I was shaking, I couldn't move. But I told him, please wait. I went out, I opened the door, I asked them to come in. He said, put something in a bag, uh, they're going to have a, have a, take us to another place. So I asked him to wait, me and my daughter like took five, 10 minutes to just throw things inside bags. And then we sat uh, down uh, in this neighbor uh, balcony and waited uh, to be evicted from the kibbutz. Um, and then I got all the stories about the things that I didn't know because I was not connected to a WhatsApp group about all the, the things that happened around us and came all together, like a son of one of my best friends were murdered. I'm sorry. Two other kids, like 18 and 24, were murdered in, in the room. My own nephew was uh, captured in, uh, in the shelter room when uh, they didn't, they couldn't, they couldn't uh, get him, so they threw uh, and grenades and tried to bomb the shelter room. But they, luckily for him, uh, they didn't succeed doing it. Doing it. And uh, a woman from my kibbutz, and there's another guy that was murdered in front of these kids. So lucky me, I didn't hear it during the night. So maybe I was a little bit quiet there than I should have been. But then I got all the stories together. Also a guy from uh, my, my class, my age group uh, from my kibbutz that we grew together. He was uh, in another kibbutz, he was still there. So I got all, this, all the bad stories together and uh, we, we waited uh, till I think one o'clock 
and uh, then we went out. We were evicted to Ella. And uh, just my neighbor told me, Fat, put your hands down in the car until we get to Urim Junction. You don't want to see nothing that's going around the car. I did because I really didn't want to see nothing. So we arrived to Elat, and uh, all the community were living in the same hotel in Elat. And uh, you know, sad, sadness was all over in the air. It was really, really rough time for us. And I was uh, looking to do something to breathe, because I couldn't breathe. So I, uh, with a mutual friend of me, of me that I met, uh, like a volunteer from a lot to say, come and help us in the hotel to ask us uh, if we need something to check on us, to help us to do. But most, most of us went only with, with bags, with few things. And so uh, I asked her if, uh, if she can uh, fix me up with something, someone that they can help me find some uh, writing uh, center in, near a lot no matter what, and then she introduced me to Eva, and uh, I got uh, the Red Mountain uh, Writing Center number, and I called them, I told them, I'm in fact, I'm from Kibbutz Reim, I really need to breathe, can I come? They welcome, welcome me, and uh, since then it was uh, twice a week that I went there to write and breathe, because I really needed it. Uh, but uh, I know everybody in there, also the names of the horses. And then I uh, also introduced to our uh, education uh, manager that uh, it's possible to send kids to ride there. So also a lot of kids from my book went to ride there and they welcomed them. Like it, it was amazing. And uh, really, really like like a point of light, light in in our in my days, especially uh, three weeks ago, we went uh, all the all of my community kibbutz Reim went to Tel Aviv. It's still not home, but it's a uh, not hotel. So we went to Tel Aviv, and uh, but I couldn't I couldn't say goodbye. I just came back to a lot and went again to the the writing center red mountain because i think they save at least part of my heart in this uh, really really bad period of time in uh, my life so I, of course i want to th thank him and i and i hope uh, they can keep help people like me and uh, kids and to do what what they do best help people with the with the special needs. And I, of course, I want to thank JNF USA for inviting me to talk in front of you, wishing you very good evening and wishing us, us all peace as well. If, if I, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your miraculous story with us. Eva, thank you for all you do. Um, we can't thank you enough, and we want you both. Thank you, Joe, and everybody that's in Nicole and is not in Nicole. So thank you as well for all your support throughout the years. And Eva, I wanted to know if you wanted to add anything about what the center is doing and how the support you're providing to Ifat and others. Well, what I can add is that um, therapeutic writing, it's not just giving air it's also something physical if you're on a horse it changes your body and it's a physical exercise you have to really concentrate because the horse is like a mirror so it doesn't just correct your posture it doesn't just teach you something but because of the concentration you have to have for the horse it also really keeps you in the moment and i think that is what it means when she say i could finally breathe and we have some therapists like a who is helping her yeah. and they're very fun they do games with the children and they don't go into the trauma only if the person himself wants to talk but it's also just learning new things rushing the horse maybe helping maybe being a volunteer 
we have different options. And we do this usually for over 200 people a week. And it's all thanks to you and to some other donors that we can continue doing this during Corona, now during the role. You support us 100% and it means a lot to if us and to many others, to me, and of course to Rafi, um, and all our staff. So I think that's the thing I want to add. And we're coming to the USA, half of February, beginning of March. We've got lovely invitations to, I think, like six states right now. We'll be there almost three weeks, and we're really looking forward to that. I know the is also so very excited. Yeah. And then she'll tell her story, and I'll do the introduction about what we usually do. And it's this that we do, but also for our children with autism, which HDHD, with learning disabilities, um, people that are in a rough stage, have cancer, whatever it is that is the special need, we try to help them. But I think that's, and if you have any questions to Ifat or to me, feel free. Right, sure.